Um, so I'd wanted this for at least five years and we finally got the time slash money slash dedication to do it. Um, and that's the ability to set the water surface based on initial condition uh, points. So think of your river as being gauged and you want to set the initial water surface based on your known gauge values. You can go in there and set the um, set known water surface elevations and RAS will do a, a profile to start your uh, initial simulation. Um, now, a typical situation is really you're modeling like maybe a, a, a dam failure scenario and you want to set that horizontal water surface behind the dam. Um, so that was, that's, that's kind of the impetus for what we're doing. Um, also, you can do inundation mapping real quickly, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, so we can set the horizontal water surface real quickly by um, going to RAS Mapper, uh, initializing the interface with a point, and then we can go to the flow file and put in the water surfaces. So these initial condition points are stored with the geometry and that will allow you to have a single geometry but run through several plans that have several different starting uh, initial conditions. All right, so let's get into the meat of this. Um, why is this cool and how does it work? So here's my example of my idealized river system where I've got 10 gauges within 10 miles. Idealized, right? It's, it's a river system we all wish we had. Um, and so I can go in and I can set my water surface at each of these gauges and then get initial conditions of water surface, and that looks pretty great, right? Looks pretty great to me. Let's talk about how we do that. That's really why I'm why I'm why I was excited to be here this uh, today is I wanted to show you guys how to do some how we do some of this stuff. So here's my idealized system, but this one has a tributary, and as you can imagine, as you get add more and more tributaries, it might get a little more complicated how we solve for that water surface. So. We have a tributary system that goes from A to B, and so here's the invert profile from A to B, and then we have a, a river profile that goes from A to C, and that's A to C. So the way we do this is, first we have what we call the downstream, uh, a downstream point. You can only have one downstream point in your river system. So that downstream point is gonna be A, and we're gonna set um, a known reference elevation to that point. And then we're going to have a known water surface for both B and C, but we're going to look at C first. So in a nutshell, the way we do this is we say we know what the water surface is going to be at A, and we know we want the water surface to be at, at C. How do we figure out what the profile looks like between those? Okay, well, we have really smart people at, at HEC, not me, but other people. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to solve Manning's equation, but we're going to solve it um, as a flow unit width or, or unit width of flow. Okay, so it doesn't really look at the geometry, it just per like cell. And we can do a backwater profile, um, assuming Manny's equation is valid between our known points and solve for the water surface profile. Okay, and when we're doing this, we're essentially developing it kind of in a 1D aspect, where we're trying to solve for just a, a simple water surface through the channel. And so we're gonna call this our seed. It's gonna be our seed for the next step in the, the water surface development. So we're going to set our water surface and then we're gonna run a series of flows um, in the channel until we get and hit this water surface elevation at C. So assuming Manning's equation is okay, um, that that set of equations is, is acceptable. Okay, so we're making a few assumptions, but we can get a, a water surface developed. So that's um, this tributary from C to A. And then we can do the same thing for the main tributary from C to, uh, from B to A. We can do the same um, Manning's equation calculation. And then for any place upstream, so we have one downstream points and then we have a whole bunch of upstream points. From the last upstream point upstream, we're just gonna do a backwater. Okay, so uh, for the blue line, we're gonna have a flat line. And then somewhere here, we're gonna have to backwater from the blue line over to the orange line and then back up to, to C. So there's my little first first uh, tick. And then, so we adopted the blue line because it was the higher of the lines. And then once the line got higher than the orange water surface, then we could do a back one. So the two main takeaways are, we're solving for using a unit, um, unit flow width, assuming Manning's equation is valid. And we're doing, uh, for the profile, and then we're doing back water 
um, any place one of the profiles was higher than the other one. Okay. All right, so there's our final profile for what we're going to use for the initial conditions. But this is, a, this is for 2D, right? So how does that actually work? Well, what that allows us to do is we might solve uh, that Nanny's equation for the main channel, right? That's our profile. And then upstream and downstream, we're going to use backwater, and we'll use a horizontal water surface for the upstream and downstream. And so that's what we use for the seed for an engine that's then going to do a wave fill to fill in all the rest of the cells that are connected and should be wet. All right, so what it looks like is that's our first iteration, that's our initial seed, and then we're gonna do a wave. We're gonna go one cell out, and we're gonna keep going, and eventually you'll see that we'll get some sort of bifurcation here, but we have an interpolated water surface around this, um, around the, that island. Okay, so it's a complicated technique. I think it works pretty good. Um, this is like the third iteration. We've been developing and, and putting out different iterations with each version of 6. 6.0 had a very simple one. 6.1 had the same. 6.2 we improved it. 6.3 it's really great. Um, and so in previous versions you might have seen using those reference points, those initial condition points, you may have seen kind of a stair-step water service profile, which wasn't very great. Um, in 6.3, you'll see we get a nice, a nice profile. Okay, so what do I do, Cam? I'm stuck using 6.1 for a while. That's what the client wants. I still want to use this feature. Well, you can still use the reference points. It's just not going to solve for as, as good a water surface. Um, but what you can do is use the warm-up um, time steps that we have in RAS to take your initial profile that might look um, very blocky and stair-stepped. And if you run the initial warm-up period for just a little bit, you'll get a nice, smooth water surface. Okay, so that's a workaround um, if you're not able to get into um, version 6.3. So that's initial conditions.